Hey guys, Steve Welch here, uh, Beeman Toyota in Nashville. Um, had a couple questions and uh, it's only fitting. Uh, temperatures get a little bit colder, uh, so people are starting to get a particular light coming on on their vehicle. And I'm going to show you what it is, I'm going to explain what it is, and I'm going to explain what's happening if you can't get it off. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and power this Highlander up. Um, all of them will have the same type of system. Alright, so when I hit the button here, you're going to see where'd it go? Now, let me try this again. When I hit this button, you're going to see it's right over here. Alright, you'll see an exclamation point. I'm going to come and do it again. See an exclamation point that's right there. Alright, so you have a little exclamation point that is a indicator that your tire pressure is low. So if you look in your book, your book will say it indicates that your tire pressure is low. So um, just in case you're uh, wondering, I'll do it again one more time for you. It's over there right next to where it says hold right there. Um, it shows that, uh, um, like I said, your tire pressure is low. So the question is, is how do you fix it? How do you know which tire and Basically, what, what does it mean? Is it, is it something you got to stop and get uh, taken care of right away? So here, here's your normal answer. If you see that light come on, the first thing that you should do is actually walk around the car. Um, if you walk around the car and you see that all of your tires look okay, and there's not like a, you know, a dramatic, uh, you know, flat tire, uh, or a really, really low tire, you're probably all right to drive it, to be quite honest with you. You're just not gonna get the, you know, 100% efficiency that you got out of it otherwise. All right, that being said, if you walk around it, everything looks good. Some cars, and you know, they'll have on your dash, like up here, you can like kind of scroll through what they've got. You'll see that some of them will be able to um, kind of show you exactly what your, um, uh, settings are on each individual tire and I'm trying to see if this one's got it or not um, this particular one doesn't have it but um, so sometimes it'll show the car and it'll say right front left front right rear left rear um, and it'll show you you know and it'll say 32 p 32 psi 31 psi 28 psi and then you know that the one that says 28 is probably the one that's hurting you um, the one thing I want to say about that is that you'll notice when the weather changes that light is very common to come on. So whether it gets cold, whether it gets hot, those two things will do it. And the reason being is that your, your tire pressure, if it's hot outside, will go up even while you're not driving it. So if your tire pressure is too high, it'll turn on that light. If your tire pressure is too low, it'll turn on that light. Now, what is too high, what is too low? Most of them are programmed to be within plus or minus three pounds of nominal. So now, what's nominal? Nominal is what the manufacturer recommends for your tire, all right? So if you're looking down here, you're gonna be able to see uh, one that's, uh, it, there's a loading placard that's on your vehicle, it's like this. Now, depending on the vehicle, this could look a little bit different, but you can see this one shows the size of the tire, and then it shows uh, your PSI is right there. So 36, 36, oh, then you got another one. This one's 60. Well, that right there is your spare, all right? Now, what a lot of times people don't realize is that your spare tire is also monitored, all right? So if you're, and, and there's a reason for that. So if your spare tire is low, I'm getting back in the car so you can hear me better. Um, if the spare tire is low, then the, um, it, it, it will broadcast to the car that the spare tire is low and they don't want you to have a flat spare is kind of the, the thought behind that but it'll also read if it's high the thing that won't read is there are very few cars and i haven't seen any so i know there's got to be very few cars that will actually show you the pressure of your spare it'll just tell you with that light if the spare is flat or if the spare is low or high um, so you'll see four tires and all of them say 36 like what that placard just said and you're going they all say 36 why is my light not turning off well, maybe your spare tire is the culprit. So check your spare tire, check the pressure on your spare tire. It's a lot of times not easy to do. Some vehicles, you actually have to drop the spare from underneath in order to check it. Some of them have covers on them. Some of them, 
different vehicles are different ways. Um, a lot of times people get mad because the valve stem is usually up towards the vehicle, which is why you have to drop it if you want to um, air the spare. The reason for that is so that road debris doesn't slice the uh, valve stem off of that vehicle or off of that uh, that tire. So the fact that that valve stems up is actually a good thing. So um, it just makes it harder to adjust the pressure, but realistically you're not adjusting the pressure as much as what you might think. But I just want to make sure you know if that light comes on, that quite possibly is the is the culprit if everything else is adding up. If you've gone around the tires and it's, bam, we're spot on on every tire and I can't get that light to come off. And, and there's actually two reasons for that, by the way. Some of them require you to drive them and put them through a cycle before the light will come off. So that's the other thing that it could be. You might have to drive the vehicle before it comes off. But chances are if you've done that, you drove the vehicle, you moved it around, you, you know, got it up to speed, you, you've done everything that you can do and that light does not come off and will not come off, what you need to do is check that spare tire. Now there's another reason that you could have it on and there's some vehicles and it depends on you know which make, which model, which one you're looking at and it might say the front tires are 32, the back tires are 36 trucks a lot of trucks could be that way so you actually have an additional amount of air pressure in the back tires or you'll have additional amount of air pressure in the front tires performance vehicles you know some of your german manufactured vehicles they'll have different pressures on your back than your front and it's because of their driving their handling what they want them to do so you'll see people that will actually take their cars in get their tires rotated which you should do and when you get your tires rotated they don't reset the position but they reset the pressure. So basically meaning is they go in there and they make sure that all the pressures are set and then they, they go, all right, well, the front should be at 40, the back should be at 60 or whatever that is. And they reset the pressures to the right pressures, but they don't reset the computer so that the, um, that the car recognizes where the tire is. So they also they have to go in with a computer when they rotate the tires and say, okay, so the tire on the right front is now the one that's on the left rear. So now they've adjusted the pressure, put the tire on the back rear. Um, I mean, if you go to a dealership, they're usually going to do this the right way. Everybody's human. Everybody can make a mistake. But if you have your tire, you know, tires rotated at some of the lube shops, something like that they might not know to do that even if they know to change the pressure so here's the two things that could happen there is you could be driving with reverse pressure so you could be losing your performance you could be losing your handling um, you know all the characteristics that you love about your car you rotate the tires and now you it, it feels like a different car because it's driving like a different car so you go through and then you change your pressures and you go oh well let me look okay my pressures are wrong let me change my pressures. Now that light turns on, says your pressures are wrong. It's because it's seeing the tires in the wrong spot. So that's the other thing that could change that. So you, you always want to make sure that you get it serviced at a spot that knows to reset those and knows how to reset those. Um, like I said, you and, and also if you have the one that reads out and it says your right front's at 32 and your left front's at 31 or where if it reads out like that, if you have them rotated, you won't know which tire you're filling until you get in there and it says one tire is at 40 because you keep trying to fill the tire that says it's at 28. So you could notice that too. So you always have to make sure that they're reset. But like I said, one of the biggest culprits that you have with shutting that light off is somebody that does everything right, realizes everything's right, and just it blows their mind that they can't get that light off and it's their spare. So definitely keep in mind to check your spare definitely keep in mind to make sure that uh, um, that you look and see what it is um, is it going to leave you on the side of the road if that exclamation points on realistically no it was cold this morning and god's honest truths i drove all the way here with mine on um, a lot of times you'll notice that when you actually get out and drive and you warm your tires up the light will shut off because you're very close to that whatever that setting is where that light turns on if you start driving and the light shuts off you know that you're actually a little bit low if it's cold weather um, it, it normally won't uh, affect it in hot weather because if it's like a high pressure thing because you went to hot weather it's going to stay on once it's on it just means that you're at the top you drive it it'll actually get a little bit higher as it gets hotter 
it's not going to go off. But if it's in cold weather, if you're driving that car and you get those wheels turning and that light shuts off, it just means you're bumping on the bottom, at least with one of your tires, you're bumping on that bottom level of what it is. And if you do that, then, you know, you can just go through and put, you know, a quick squirt in every tire and it won't, it won't happen again. So, um, I mean, even if you didn't have a, a tire gauge, you could realistically do that. But tire gauges are a couple bucks. By a tire gauge, you can find out exactly what it's doing on which one, and you can find out which one it is. So um, the electronics are nice when it says where, you know, which tires at what. And I've used it, and it's and it's great. You don't really have to check. You just kind of peek in because if you're trying to get the computer to shut off that light, you have to have the computer see the pressure that it wants to see or the light stays on. So, um, and, and nine times out of 10, once you get all of the pressures to the right spot, that light will just shut off. You don't even need to drive it. Sometimes you need to drive it. So, um, uh, like I said, I'm not trying to ramble here. I'm just trying to give you all of the little times where that light can come on and why. And so that way you guys can know when, um, you really have a problem. Um, but yeah, if you've checked all the, all the tires and it, it still won't go off, your spare tire is nine times out of 10 is going to be the, the culprit. Um, or you have the tires in different positions. Um, or, you know, you have somebody goes, yeah, tires take 32 and they put 32 in every tire and don't realize that, you know, you could have a little donut looking tire on like an old Corolla and they take 40, you know, the it, not a lot of the, um, times you see the really small tires on cars they have a really high air pressure so watch for that too so don't just assume the air pressure always check that door sill that i showed you there for the the right tire pressure also if you are looking at the right tire pressure um also check and make sure you have the right tires on there, right tire size so um they can vary just a little bit because some tires are kind of mix and match a little bit wider a little less tall a little i mean some of the tires can be different but like I said, just trying to give you guys the information to make sure that you have everything that you need to know how to fix that. It's not something you need to take to the shop. It's not a check engine light. It's an informational light. It's government mandated that it's on there. Um, and like I said, weather will change it. And I am 90% sure on mine that it's my spare tire because I drove it. It came on when it turned cold. I drove it. It didn't come back up as I was driving it and didn't shut back off when it hasn't been on this whole time, realistically speaking, it's probably my spare. So, and it's more times than not, it's probably yours. So, like I said, if you can't get it off, that's why. Um, but hopefully I've helped you guys out to understand why that light comes on, how to get it off, how to know what you need to do to get it off. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you think I missed anything, put them in the comments. I'm more than happy. I, I definitely, I respond to everybody as, as much as I can, of course. Um, I appreciate every one of you guys. Please like, subscribe, um, and uh, definitely I appreciate every one of you guys watching the channel. Um, let me know if you have any suggestions for other videos. I definitely take most of the videos from questions. So, um, Steve Welch, Bima Toyota in downtown Nashville, once again showing you why your tire light turns on, how it turns on, and uh, obviously this beautiful Highlander that I'm sitting in here. So, um, Steve Welch, Bima Toyota in downtown Nashville. You guys have a great day. We appreciate every one of you guys.